Oh, recording bending. Okay, so the system is uh, warning me and telling me that we are recording. So everything I'm going to uh, to say right now will be recorded, and if you ask it any question, it will be recorded. You are agreeing, guys, right? Yep. Where were? Yes. Yep. Okay. Oh yeah. So uh, let me share this with you. You are seeing that screen, right? So he's yeah, we're seeing your screen. Yeah, he is asking me here to find V1 and VG in the circuit shown in Figure One if VO is equal to five. So if you would like to solve such a problem, this is electric circuit. He is telling me that the voltage between these two points, which is VO, it is equal to 5 volts. What he would like to find, he would like to find V1 and VG. For a problem like this, I will start from the side that he gave me a specific value. So here he gave me the voltage across this guy. The voltage between these two points is equal to the voltage for 10 ohms and the voltage for 30 ohms. So if I would like to find the current in 10 ohms and the current in 40 ohms, what I have to do, I will divide the voltage over the resistance. So I can say this current, which is, for example, equals I 10 ohms, and this current is equal to I 40 ohms. So based on that, I can say I 10 is equal to five divided by 10, which is equal to 0.5 ampere. And by the same way, I can say I 40 equals five over 40. Based on that, I can say that the current in 10 ohms branch is known and the current in 40 ohms branch is uh, branch is known as well. So what is the next step? The next step is I will continue finding the unknowns because I don't have anything to do except trying to find the unknowns and maybe this will help me for finding VG and V1. So he told me that the current here, by the way, this guy is current source or voltage source. It is 40 I2. Current source. current source. Yes. So I can say summation the current for this node is equal to zero or summation the current for this node is equal to zero. It doesn't matter. So if I said summation the current, for example, for node one is equal to zero. So this current is leaving, this current is leaving, and this current is leaving. So I can say 40 I2 plus 0.5 plus 5 over 40 equals 0. Based on that, I can calculate the value of I2, which is this current. And he has already calculated it, which is equal to negative 15. 0.625 milliampere. Mike, do you have any question for that? Any question? Mike is not here. No. Mike? Yeah, I'm Mike. Do you have any question? No. Okay, now. Do we have current in this branch, guys? No, we do not. No. Because this is not connected to this. I can say this is open circuit, so there is no current in this guy. So I can say I in this guy is zero. And by the same way, the current in this guy is 
Yes. OK, now. I'll go back to the second circuit, which is this one, as if I have three different circuits. I solved the first one and I'm talking about the second circuit right now. For the second circuit, I have 25 I1, I have 20 and I have 80. He gave me I2 and he asked it, oh, I calculated I2. He asked me to calculate V1. So V1 is the voltage across 80 ohms. How to find this voltage? Actually, it is equal to 80 times I2. What is the value of I2? It is given here. So based on that, I can say that V1 equals 80 times I2, which is this guy. Now, what is the relation between the voltage across 80 and the voltage across 20? What is the relation between them? The same. Yes. So based on that, I can say that the current in this guy, for example, its name is I20. I can say that I20 is equal to V1 divided by 20. Excellent. Now, what is the relation between this current, this current, and this current? The summation equals zero. Excellent. So this current is equal to 25 I1. So based on that, I can say summation I equals zero for no two. So I can say 25 I1 plus I2 plus I20 equals zero. Based on that, I can find the value of I1 because I20 is calculated, I2 it is given here, and I1 uh, uh, will be calculated from this equation because it is the only unknown. Based on that, I can find I1, which is equal to 3.125. Any question for that part? Okay, what is left? The circuit. In this circuit, I have voltage source and I have two resistors. So if I ask you to calculate I1 pole from this circuit, I1 is equal to what? Or if I ask you to find the relation between VG and I1, what should you say? Submission of the voltage here is equal to zero, right, Paul? Right. So I can say VG equals 60 I1 plus 260 I1. Am I right? You can. So based on that, I can say summation V is equal to zero for loop one, for example. And this is loop one. So VG minus 60 I1 minus 260 I1 is equal to zero. So based on that, I can say VG equals 260 plus 60 multiplied by I1. And based on that, I can find VG, which is equal to one. Any question for that problem? If I give you the same problem, but it's changing like this voltage, uh, this uh, uh, resistor value and this resistor value, or 
changing this voltage and instead of being five to be something else. Is it easy to solve the problem? Yeah, it's fairly easy. Do you want me to repeat anything related to that problem? I personally am good. Mike, would you like me to repeat anything? Okay. Let me move to the next problem, which is this one. <clears throat> For this circuit, <coughs> excuse me. So I asked you to calculate VO and IO. Where is VO? It is this voltage. Where is IO? It is this current. Okay. Find the power dissipated in six ohms. Find the current in this guy. The power developed by the current source. Excellent. So, <clears throat> problem like this, how to solve it? If you would like to solve such a problem, we studied in electric circuits many ways for solving such a problem. One of them is to use KVL and KCL. Another one is to use load voltage method. A third one, if you have only one source, you can find R total. And so on and so on and so on. There are many methods I can use for solving such a problem. So which method do you like me to use? <clears throat> Doesn't matter. Any one you like. <coughs> Let's go with R total. Okay, R total. So this one is connected with this one in series or in parallel. These two. Parallel. And these two. Series. And those two, along with this one in series. series. Okay. So I can say that these two are connected parallel with this one series, and those two are connected series. So based on that, I can say those are connected parallel, so 90 is connected in parallel with 10, and the overall is in series with 16. And 20 is connected in series with 10. So if you try to calculate that, this will be equal to isn't 90. It just isn't it just 6 ohms? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you are right. This is 6, 16. So, <clears throat> let me use the calculator with you. 90 times 10 over 90 plus 10, which is 100, plus 6. This guy gave 15 ohms. And this guy will give 30 ohms. So, you can redraw your circuit to be like that. This guy is 15, and this guy is 13, and this guy is 2.4 ampere. So 15 and 30 are connected in. Hello. But I don't need to do that. Why? Because I can use the current divider, right? So based on that, if you try to use the current divider, you can say this is I1 and this is I2. So using current divider, you can say I1 equals 2.4 multiplied by 30 divided by 30 plus 15. 
if you try to calculate this guy, 2.4 times 30 <clears throat> divided by 45, this guy will give you 1.6. And by the same way, I can say I2 is equal to 2.4 multiplied by 15 divided by 30 plus 15. So I believe this guy will be 0.8. Excellent. Now, let me go back to the original circuit, which is this one. Where is I1? This is I1. Where is I2? This is I2. So, if I know I2, can I calculate VO? Yes, VO is equal to I2 times 20. So, VO equals I2 times 20. If you try it to multiply that, <clears throat> 20 times 0.8, <clears throat> this guy will be 16 volt. This is the value of V2, uh, VO, sorry. VO is equal to 16 volt. Now, what he would like me also to find, <coughs> he would like me to find IO. I have already calculated I1. How to find IO, guys? Any opinion? Nope, Find coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Find the voltage dissipated by the 6 ohm resistor and then multiply it by the amperage. Another opinion? Sorry, <clears throat> what were you asking? I got kind of uh, laggy I, for a bit there. I, I have I1 here, there. Yeah. And I would like to find IO. I'll just use the current divider. Excellent. So we just use the current divider. These two are connected in parallel. And the current here is the summation of those two. So I can use the current divider again. And based on that, I can say IO equals the current I1 multiplied by 10 divided by 10 plus 19. So if you try to do that, <clears throat> you will have, let me substitute using the calculator, 1.6 multiplied by 10 divided by 100. So this guy will be 0.16 ampere. This is which current? It is the current in this guy that he asked me about. Do you like me to repeat that? Thank you. So I tried to use the current divider by saying the current here is equal to the total current multiplied by this resistor divided by the summation. Then he asked me about the power dissipated in six ohms. What is the power in this guy? How to find it? Do you remember the equation of the power? The power is 6 ohms. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. So you'd find the uh, voltage across the 6 ohm resistor and then you uh, 
multiply it by the current. Or there is another equation. I squared R. Yes, I have I, so I will square it and multiply it by R, or use what Paul said. So the power in six ohms equals I squared R, which I, <clears throat> I1, and I1 is equal to 1.6 squared, multiplied by R, which is six ohms. If you try to calculate this power, 1.6 times 1.6 times 6. This guy would be 15.36 watts. Now, he asked me also to find the power in this source. Which is the power here? How to find the power in this guy? Power is equal to I times V, right? For the source. Yep. But how to find the power, the, 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 the voltage across this source? The voltage between these two points is the same like the voltage across this guy, is the same like the voltage across this guy. Am I right? Yeah. So I can say the voltage across 2.4 ampere is equal to I1 times 15. Or I2 times 30. So I1 is equal to 1.6 times 15. If you try to calculate this guy, It is 2.24, uh, sorry, 24 volts. Once you calculated this voltage, you will say that the power across this guy is equal to V times I. So the power in 2.4 is equal to ampere V times I, which V, this guy, which I 2.4, but wait a second. The sign for this power is negative or positive? The sign for this, excuse me? What are you saying? Can it be pause of 2.4 amps? This is current source. Negative. Yes, it should be negative because we said before, for any active element, the power is equal to negative V I. For any passive element like resistor, the power is equal to positive I times V. So the sign for this will be negative. If you try to calculate this guy, 24 times 2.4, this guy will be negative 57.6 watts. Any question for this problem, guys? Yeah, sorry. Can you explain why that's negative again? Just because okay. uh, because it's uh, losing power? Yes. OK. Any question for that problem, guys? Thank you. Okay, let us move to this problem. <clears throat> Here, I'm asking you for this problem to use node voltage method to find the value of VO in the following circuit. What is VO? It is the voltage here. So node voltage method said what? I have to use one reference node. But before I start saying that, how many nodes do we have in this circuit?
How many four? nodes? Four, isn't it? Is it four or five? I think it's four because the two VC at the bottom are essentially just one big node. Yes. So I will say this is my reference node. Its voltage is zero. Do we know this voltage? No. So I will assume it. Do we know this voltage? No. So I will assume this guy is V1 and this guy is V2. Do we know this voltage? Yes. It is? 50 volts. Yes. So I will say summation, the current for node one is equal to zero. Summation, the current for node two is equal to zero. There is no need to say summation, the current here is equal to zero. Why? Because I know its voltage. But what is VO <clears throat> based on that circuit? VO is equal to what? Because I would like to know what am I going to do? I'm going to say submission, the current here is equal to zero. Submission, the current here is equal to zero. Then I will try to find V1 and V2. And after that, how to find VO? This is my concern. <clears throat> It'll be 50 voltage divider minus V2. It will be 15 minus V2, yes. But actually, it will be V2 minus 50. Why? Because this is negative and this is positive. Right, Adam? So you are assuming right. that the voltage for this node is higher than the voltage for this node. So I can say VO is equal to V2 minus 15. Any question for, for V2? For VO, sorry? Now, let me solve by saying summation I is equal to zero for node one. All currents are leaving. So I will say this current is equal to V1 minus 50 divided by 80 plus the current in this branch is V1 divided by 50 plus the current in this branch V1 minus V2 over 40, which is equal to zero. And then submission I is equal to zero for node two. So this current plus this current plus this current plus this current is equal to zero. The current in this branch is V2 minus 50 over 800. Plus the current in this guy is V2 minus V1 over 40. Plus the current in this guy is V2 minus zero divided by 200. Plus the current in this guy, which is opposite to this, negative 750 times 10 to the power negative 3. This guy is equal to 0. My problem right now is how to solve equation number 1 and the equation number 2 to find the value of V2. And this is the problem for dealing with such a circuit. So what I have to do is, I will try, try to simplify my circuit as much as I can. So if you try to simplify your circuit, let us talk about this circuit, for example. Or this equation, which is V1 minus 15. So I can take V1 as a common part, multiply it by 1 over 80, plus 1 over 50, plus 1 over 40. And then I have minus V2 multiplied by 1 over 40. And then I have negative 50 divided by 80. I will move it to the other side. It will be with a positive sign. I'm going to add those. If you try to use your calculator. So 1 over 80 plus 
1 over 50 plus 1 over 14. This guy will give you 0. Point, oops, where is it? 0, 0.0575 V1 minus 1 over 40 V2. I don't like to deal with fractions. 0. 0.025 equals 50 over 80. 0.625. Now, I'm going to find V1 as a function of V2, so I will move this guy here. So I will say 0.0575 V1 equals 0.625 plus 0.025. V2, then divide both sides by this number. I can say V1 is equal to 0.625 over 0.0575 plus 0.025 divided by 0.0575 V2. So based on that, I can say V1 equals 6 to 5 divided by 0 0.0575. This guy is equal to 10.87 plus 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.0575 equals 0 0.43 V2. Then, this is V1. I'll do the same with this equation. What am I going to do here? I'm going to say V2 times for this equation. V2 times 1 over 800 plus 1 over 40 plus 1 over 200. Then I have V1 over 40 only, so negative V1 times 1 over 40. And then I have this term and this term, I'll move them to the right hand side. So I have 750 times 10 to the power negative 3 plus 50 over 800. So, I'm going to simplify this guy. One over 40 equals negative 0 plus V2 times 1 over 80 plus 1 over 40 plus 1 over 200. This guy will be 0 0.03125. Sorry, do you mean 1 over 80 or 1 over 800? 800. I believe gotcha. it's 800 because, oh, yes, it is 800 because it is V2 minus 50 over 800. Right, cool. 
Now, I'm talking about this guy, which is 50 over 800 plus 750 times 10 to the power negative 3, which is 0 0.75. So this guy will be 0 0.8125. So, based on that, I have this equation and I have this equation. I can use equation one. So, from equation one, into equation two, I will substitute by the value of V1 by using negative 10 0.75 plus 0.43 v2 times 0.025 plus v2 times 0.03125 equals 0.8125. Then I'm going to distribute this time this and this time this, and I'm going to add everything related to v2. So I will say 0.43 times 0.025 give me this guy i will add it up to this plus 0.03125 so this guy 0.0420 i'm not adding because i have negative sign i'm sorry for that so negative this plus this so 0.43 times 0.025 equals, this guy should be negative sign. So I have to subtract it from this guy. So I would say, I can make it opposite here. 3, 1, 2, 5. So the result will be 0.0205 V2. And I put negative here because I said this minus this, but it is opposite. And I have this guy times this as well. So 0.025 times 10.87. This guy is with negative sign. It will be moved here. It will be positive and it will be added to 0.8125. This guy is 1.08425. Then, based on that, I can say V2 is equal to 1.0825 divided by 0 0.025. So this guy divided by 0.0205 it will be 52.9. This is the voltage V2. Then he would like to find V1. So for finding V1, no, he needs only V2 because I can say VO is equal to V2 minus 50. So VO is equal to V2 minus 50. So this guy will be 52.9 minus 50, which is equal to, uh, I can say this guy is approximately equals uh, 53, so I can say 53 minus 50, so 3 volt approximately. So, like what you are seeing, solving the problem is not hard, but the problem is how to solve these two equations, this equation and this equation. Any question for this problem, guys?
So for the solution, uh, I tried to find the, the power check, but you don't need this. This is extra. For the solution, he found VO, which is equal to 3.2, because uh, uh, he did some approximations. That's why there is a difference, which is 0.2 between his solution and my solution, which is okay. I didn't make any approximation. He was using uh, only two decimal numbers, uh, but I didn't do that. I tried to use the whole number, and that's why we got three, and the model solution got 3.2, which is okay, both of them are acceptable. Do you have any question for this problem? Oh, thank you for showing us through it. I, I didn't hear you. What are you saying? No, thank you. Oh, OK. You're welcome. Let us see this problem. For problem number four, he's asking me to find all unknowns in the problem. And he would like to find the power, for example, in 2.5 or whatever. He would like to find all unknowns. Find i, i2, i4, i3, v1, v2, i1. So if I am in your situation and I solve the problem like that, I will be scared because I have many loops and many nodes. But if you try to think a little bit about this branch, I have wire without resistance connected in parallel with 2.5. This is considered as short circuit. For short circuit, it means there is no current in this guy, right? So yep. I use equal to zero. Excellent. As if I don't have I2. I don't have 2.5. By the same way, if you try to look to these two resistors, they are connected in parallel across this guy without resistance. And this guy is considered as short circuit as well, right? So this resistor will be cancelled, this resistor will be cancelled, which means V2 will be equal to zero and I4 will be equal to zero. Based on that, I can say the new circuit will be represented as 10 volt, 2.5, this current is I, this current is I1, this current is I3. This guy is 2.5, and he would like to find the voltage between these two points, which is V1. So, what is the relation between I, I1, I3? It's all the series circuit. Yes. What is the relation between I, I1, I3? They are different or they are equal? They are all equal since it's a series circuit. Yes. So I can find R total and I can say I equals I1 equals I3, which is equal to the voltage divided by the summation of the two resistors which is equal to 2 ampere. Based on that, can I find V1 across this guy? V1 is equal yep. to 1. So V1 is equal to 2 multiplied by 2.5, which is equal to 5 volt. If I ask you to find the power for 2.5, it is equal to I multiplied by V1, which is 2 multiplied by 5, which is 10 watts. Any question for that problem? 
Nope. Mike, would you like me to repeat anything? Okay. I think Mike might have a problem with his mic. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So, let us see problem number five. Do you like to have a break or continue? I could use a break. Okay, five minutes. Sounds good. Okay. So, I will stop here. Mm.